your teenage child has been diagnosed with functional neurological disorder, short for FND, or chronic pain, such as persistent headaches or migraines. And whoever diagnosed your child, likely a neurologist, will say, go see a psychologist. Why on earth does your child need to see a psychologist for something that is seemingly very medical condition? Let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Dr. Lee. I'm a pediatric health psychologist and chronic pain survivor myself. My mission is to help teens and their parents resolve persistent symptoms such as chronic pain and FND so that they can get their life back and feel like normal again. Because I truly believe every teen who's struggling with chronic pain or FND deserves so much better in their lives. If you're new to this channel, welcome and make sure to grab a free PDF parenting guide on how to help your teen at home who's struggling with chronic pain or FND. The link is down below. Okay, so today's video, and retrospectively, I'm thinking maybe I should have had this video way, way back in when I started YouTube channel because as a pediatric health psychologist, I'm always asked this question by so many families. Uh, why are we seeing you? So let's talk about it. So before I start talking about what pediatric health psychologist does, I just want to give you some foundation of what is really important for you to know. So there are certain common denominators between FND and chronic pain. I mean, depending on who you ask, chronic pain is considered part of FND, such as headaches, migraines, and complex regional pain syndrome, short for CRPS. But aside from the formality and what goes into what category, what they have in common between FND and chronic pain for your teenagers is that both conditions are 100% biopsychosocial phenomenon. Even though you're seeing primary care physician or neurologist or any other medical professionals for your child's conditions, the reality is these conditions are never just a pure biomedical problem anymore. That's like a really old way of thinking, like, like 50, 60 years ago, you know, kind of thing. And in fact, FND was considered up until not too long ago pure psychological phenomenon. Oh, it must be stress. Oh, it's your anxiety, all of that. Or it's a trauma. Well, not really the case anymore. So between FND and chronic pain, they're both biopsychosocial phenomena. All right. Therefore, just focusing on this pure biological approach, such as taking medicines and injections, procedures and IV treatments and any of this traditional conventional biological approach itself is never enough. That's why your child is taking these medicine religiously, going to hospitals multiple times to get this IV treatment, cocktail, pain management, or whatever, whatever it is that your child is getting is inconsistent at best because both of these conditions, FND and chronic pain, are biopsychosocial phenomena. So biological approach is only tapping into this biological phenomenon. So it's not really tapping into psychological or social phenomena. So there is that. As you can imagine, usually the treatment for FND and chronic pain requires your child to be working with interdisciplinary or multiple providers on handling these situations or conditions. So if your child has been seeing, let's say, a physical therapist and chiropractors, acupuncturists, massage therapists, and um, continue to see neurologists for medicine after medicine after medicine, and then you're thinking, we've been there, done that. If that is what you're thinking, I would say, hold that thought. And maybe some families would say, yeah, my daughter sees a counselor and therapist, in fact, for several years for whatever reasons. And um, so it's not helping. I totally get it. So this is where a pediatric health psychologist comes into play. So what are we? What are we doing? And here's the thing. What pediatric health psychologist does is well, first of all, someone like me, who is a pediatric health psychologist, historically has only lived in, most likely, a medical setting, such as hospital setting or primary care clinics. 
because we were considered part of a medical team, even though we are psychologists. And our job is to basically be the conduit between patients and the medical team in educating what the patient's medical condition is, what the treatment looks like, and how hard it is for that patient to be going through this medical condition and treatment associated with that chronic illness or medical conditions and any psychological or emotional difficulties associated with it. Not only how hard it is, but there is a fear or there is a grief, you know, that um, some patients cannot really do what they in, used to do in the past. And so in a nutshell, pediatric psychologists like us, we are trained to be not only a psychologist, but also in a medical setting. So therefore, we do get special training and education on all kinds of medical illnesses and what these medical teams are doing to treat these conditions. And then we are sort of like showing up as a chicken breast in a burger shop, you know, to be part of the team to help the patients and the caregivers or family members who are going through the same journey of healing. So what we do is we are darn good at educating the patient's medical condition in a way that is easy to understand, kind of like in the layman's term, right? And our treatment approach is not necessarily this traditional conventional talk therapy. Once again, there's nothing wrong with it. But the way we're trained in a medical setting is we don't have the luxury of time to see a patient every single week for however many months and years, right? So we are actually taught to focus on symptom management, very goal-directed orientation, and skill-based treatment approach. So less of traditional talk therapy, more of skills, tools, and tips and tricks under their belt that they can use to either manage the symptoms or resolve the symptoms. So what kind of skills are we teaching? Well, in larger sense, three different categories. One is daily activities and daily functioning. So this would include sleep, eating habits, and um, regular exercise and things like that. They're really important. Also, something called medical adherence. So let's say you're um, diagnosed with a condition and you are required to take medicine or do certain things on a regular basis. Statistically speaking, it's really hard for anyone on the planet to be very diligent automatically and taking these medicine religiously without any effort, right? And so part of our job is to figure out what is getting in the way of our patients adhering to the treatment. Is that the lack of knowledge or is that some sort of hesitations or is that the belief system or is it logistically impossible or time-wise it's not really practical? What are they? So we are here to talk through and problem solve these situations to facilitate the recovery process. So that's also part of the daily lifestyle, education and intervention. Moving on to concrete, practical, step-by-step -step approach to resolve symptoms or manage the symptoms in a way that their quality of life is actually better. So we're talking about relaxation strategies, which by the way, I am all about slow belly breathing and I don't really like deep breathing and there's a reason for it. And then I have a video about that too. So go check that out. But aside from that, uh, it's activity pacing. So it's a fancy name for having pre-programmed mini breaks to increase the endurance and improve the quality of life instead of just sitting and resting forever until your condition gets better and then going back to life. When it comes to something like chronic pain and FND, the treatment approach is actually the backwards or opposite in a direction, meaning you actually get to be active again first and then feel better from either pain or FND symptoms. So those are the things we can teach. And then there is also for pediatric specific because a kid's job is to go to school, right? And so school plan, how to coordinate care with the school personnel and how to um, equip parents to educate the school people and then peers and teachers on how they can help their child while they're in school. So things like that. And we also coordinate care directly with the school personnel as well if needed. And then thirdly, not really the least, absolutely not the least, is working on the mindset and then possible root causes 
by using evidence-based treatment strategies such as cognitive behavior therapy, acceptance commitment therapy, internal family system, whatever you call it. And really going back to sort of like this practical step-by-step is to handle how to regulate autonomic nervous system. Because one thing in common between FND and chronic pain is that your child is likely to have autonomic nervous system, like fight or flight in a frozen system in haywire, meaning like very dysregulated, stuck in one or the other. And so that is part of the work that we do to regulate the autonomic nervous system. And that could be also part of the root causes of why your child is having these issues. And therefore, we're looking at what are the moving parts that are all contributing to FND and chronic pain. So then we can help like one by one untangle what has been playing a role in perpetuating these FND and chronic pain symptoms. We are not necessarily the same thing as a traditional talk therapy counselors. However, we are very equipped in medical terms, medical settings, and some of us are also specializing in prescribing psychology, meaning prescribing psychotropic medications. And so knowing what kind of drug-drug interactions or side effects can be happening, then some of us can inform the family's much, much better information. And with that better information, family feels more equipped and prepared on handling these different situations in different scenarios. So that's in a nutshell what pediatric health psychologist does. Oh, and let's not forget that. We are also very trained to work with the child's parents and how they can help their child going towards a recovery and get their life back. So I oftentimes, if not more, work with the parents of the teenagers that I work with. So what can you do if you're watching this video and so far, well, thank you so much, first of all, if your teen has been diagnosed with either FND or chronic pain, and if your doctor or if your child's doctor is recommending to see a psychologist, then I would say, ask them, what is this psychologist's job is? Because some of the providers might be connected to pediatric health psychologists like myself. I work with a lot of neurologists who are sending their patients my way for FND and chronic pain treatments, but not every neurologist has the luxury of connecting with pediatric health psychologists like myself. So they might just recommend to see a counselor, you know, for managing anxiety or something like that. And again, there's nothing wrong with it, but those providers, mental health providers may or may not be specialized in treating FND or chronic pain. Therefore, you may not be going in the most efficient way possible towards a recovery. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but those are the different specialties that are out there. So you as a parent really need to know what they are by asking the providers. Okay, so what kind of therapists are they? Are they specialized in FND or chronic pain? And what do you know about this therapist? And is there any testimonials or other families who've gone through this treatment and what were their results? Kind of thing, right? So feel free to ask them, right? And then you have the right to know. And um, if you have the luxury of finding a pediatric health psychologist on your own, that would be the golden. But I know we are not really readily out there. So, but if you do have luxury of finding those pediatric health psychologists, that would be great. And I do have some limited resources of pediatric health psychologists. So link is down below. Now, both FND and chronic pain are truly legit condition and your child is not faking. It can be very debilitating and quite terrifying. However, with the right approach, these conditions are definitely treatable, manageable, if not solvable. Now, if you and your dedicated, bright teenage child are ready to take actionable solutions to resolve persistent physical symptoms such as chronic pain and FND, then you might be a good fit for my program. Click the link below to schedule a call to talk to me and see if you qualify for the program. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will talk to you in the next video.